I don't recall anyone trying to kill you there either, George. And finally, we have the tapestry in Spain. Did I mention I almost got killed there? Not yet, but I'm sure you're about to. It was only my cat-like reflexes that saved me from certain death. Cat-like reflexes, eh? And while I was risking life and limb, where were you, Andre? Getting your glasses fogged up over an Etruscan vase? That's enough, boys. Can we get back to saving the world? Of course. My apologies. He started it. Well, uh, the Latin phrase are the words of Julius Caesar. He was describing the island of Britain. Are you sure? The map didn't look much like Britain. How come Caesar described Britain as being at the edge of the world? To the Romans, the Mediterranean was the center of the universe. Britain was a remote, unfriendly place inhabited by blue painted savages. It doesn't change much. Well, they stopped painting themselves blue. Except when they go to a football match. They used an extract from a plant called Woad, Isetis tinctoria. The Scots were using it until fairly recently in their wars with the English. Fairly recently? I don't recall the Scots being at war with the English. How recently are you talking about? I believe William Wallace's men used it in the 13th century. They might well have been using it as late as... Uh, you can't remember, can you? Thirteen, fourteen. Ah, we're back onto that, are we? André, what is it? What do you mean? Thirteen, fourteen in Scotland. The Battle of Bannockburn. That would explain the stream on the chessboard. That's what a burn is. Right, André? As in Bannockburn? Right, George. And it gets better. Tradition has it that the Scots were helped by a shock force of... Uh, well, can't you guess? Nuts Templar? Yes, a group of outlawed Templars. They are said to have turned the tide for the Scots. And it all ends at a church in the Isle of Britain at Bannockburn in a church. What are we waiting for? I'll call a cab. I can't go. Andre, you've been loads of help, but... What George is trying to say is that you shouldn't feel guilty. I was? We understand you've got commitments. But listen, we have to hurry. Let's go, George. We'll see it through. Oh, and, uh, don't worry about us. Oh, it must be done. Oh, oh, I guess so. And yeah, we must be nearly there. Somewhere, out there in the dark, is Scotland. We've come a long way together to get here. Yeah. Let's hope it was worth it. There's something I've been meaning to say to you, Nico. Is this the right time and place, George? There might not be another time. I don't want to waste this chance. You don't need to say anything. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. But here, you see, now. I've still got the clown's nose. So I see. You should throw it away, George. I've still got the clown's nose. So I see. You should throw it away, George. You're exhausted. Why don't you get some sleep? Sleep? At a time like this? Excited, huh? Would you like something to help you sleep, dearie? I've got some tablets in my bag. Oh, no. Thank you. Thanks all the same, ma'am. The old lady reminded me of my grandmother, except, of course, that this old lady was still alive. Pardon me. Yes, my dear. Do you know what time we're due in Sterling? A quarter to six, but we're running eight minutes late. What's the book you're reading? Oh, 
at something I picked up at the station. A medieval detective story. Quite well written for that kind of thing. It's been out of print for years. What's the title of the book? The Crooked Crusader Caper by Molly Pegram. I assumed the author was a woman, but apparently not. His real name is... Professor Nigel Pegram. That's right. Do you know him? No, I never met him. George is a great fan of his, though. Do you know Sterling well? Yes, I do. Is that where you two love bands are bound? Yeah, we... It's one of the places we thought we'd stay on our holiday. Be sure to visit the castle, won't you? Oh, I'm sure it's a neat place. But we are not really interested in history, are we, George? Uh, no. I suppose espresso bars and boogie-woogie are more your cup of tea. That's right. There's nothing George enjoys more than a good boogie. Is there a church called St. Ninian's in Sterling? Yes, there is. And I know why you're going there. You do? Of course I do. It's obvious you're in love. You're eloping. And they say a romance is dead. Would you believe that this clown's nose led us to being on this train tonight? I would indeed. No, honestly, it... You would? Certainly. You have an honest face. Where are you going, Josh? Do I need to spell it out? Don't snap at me. If you're going to take a leak, why don't you say so? Okay, I'm going to take a leak. L E A K. Tickets, please. Oh, hi. That's a standard full price peak return. Don't you have a senior citizen's rail card? I rarely travel by train. My ticket is perfectly valid, is it not? Well, yeah, but you could have saved up to a third of the cost. I do not need to indulge in puffling thriftiness. Blimey, you're a funny old bird and no mistake. Tickets, please, sir. Here. Off to Sterling, eh? Yes, we are. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed. It's a miserable place this time of year. Still, there's plenty of pubs and a lovely view from the castle. Thank you. I don't want to worry you, but there was something familiar about that guy. Are you sure? You're tired. Perhaps you're mistaken. Hmm, maybe. But I didn't like the look in his eyes when he spoke to you. The old lady reminded me of my grandmother, except, of course, that this old lady was still alive. Can't you sit still, George? I need to go to the John. While you're there, check out the buffet car, George. Unthinkable though it is, I am hungry enough to eat English food. Okay. His face was blotched and unshaven. I guess he'd been traveling all night. Red-rimmed eyes stared fish-like above his broken nose. All I could see of the man's face was a massive purple bruise around his eye. It was a strange contrast with his flaming red hair, which stuck out in stiff, greasy tufts. Hi! Having a party? No. Is this British? 